So I've received a lot of criticism, obviously, for my dislike of Baldur's Gate 3. And one of the things that I've noticed, though, as time has progressed and the game has gone on and people have become a little bit more level-headed about it, is that a lot of people are super critical of my views in that original video for the right reasons. Namely, the major one is that the game, I accuse the game of being a murder hobo simulator. Well, on the first day of early access release, it was. There wasn't that much to do other than combat. There weren't the branches to the storyline that there are now. There wasn't a lot of the narrative complexity that there is now. I know the narrative complexity might be being a bit generous, but you get what I mean. There, there weren't all the options to explore the world the way that there are uh, on full release. And if you've got to give Larian props for anything, it's that Larian actually finished an early access game, which in 2023 is something to be praised. However, even the people, the the more moderate people that that comment on on my videos on Baldur's Gate three tend to say something like, "Yeah, I mean, I think you're wrong about most of this, but um, I kind of don't like all the the characters all that much." And the people that are supportive of my view are almost always supportive because they hate the characters. And so it got me thinking, you know, I want to first start off this video by saying I do not hate Baldur's Gate 3 because the characters. I don't particularly like them, but I play lots of games, computer games with characters I don't like. I play JRPGs with characters that could be cardboard cutouts of uh, Cloud from um, Final Fantasy VII. My issue is not with the characters. So that, that's my my issue with the game is really, really simple. I didn't like Divinity 2. I didn't want to play a sequel to Divinity 2. And then the Baldur's Gate 3 label got slapped on what is basically Divinity 3. And then I got disappointed. My my line of thought on here is is pretty... At, at this point of the full release is, is pretty simple. Um, that's just the fact that I don't like Divinity 2. I mean, oftentimes, if you don't like a, a, a game, you're not going to like its sequel. This is a pretty common phenomenon in gaming. If you're the sort of guy that likes Counter-Strike, you might like Counter-Strike 2 when it comes out. But if you hated Counter-Strike and you only like to play Quake, well, you're probably not going to like Counter-Strike 2. It just stands to reason. But I want to go in, in this video into why, I, why the characters in Baldur's Gate 3 have caused so much controversy. And I want to say it's not because they're this reasonably undefined term of woke. Instead, I think they exhibit a turn in modern storytelling that a lot of people don't find particularly engaging, even people that are super enjoying the game otherwise. This is not to say that the people that have commented that they hate the characters because they're woke are necessarily wrong. The term is so ill-defined that you could use it to capture the things that I'm about to discuss in this video, but I think it is perhaps an over-politicization of something that's really just bad storytelling, and we would need a lot more proof and argument to prove that the politics is necessarily leading to a particular kind of storytelling. I mean, it's not like, how far am I? I can mention him. It's not like we have Stalin telling us what kinds of stories we need to write. Not at this point, anyways. So the main reason that Baldur's Gate 3's characters suck is that they don't have any moral depth. And I know those of you that have accused them of being bad because they're woke are like, he just admitted, he just admitted it out the gate that they're woke. I don't think that woke and moral depth have to do with the same thing. Uh, moral depth, uh, characters of various political ideologies can have moral depth. Um, I can read a novel about a communist in the 1920s that has moral depth. I can read a, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pursue this line further, but you, you get where I'm going. People can have moral depth and complexity even though they're uh, a part of a political ideology that isn't, isn't great or that you don't agree with. The problem with Baldur's Gate 3's characters is they don't have this. I'm going to try and avoid spoilers for the uh, arcs of the characters in this, but let me make a generalization that I hope won't be a spoiler. If you really don't want any spoilers and you're still in like Act 1, Act 2 of the game, you might want to skip ahead. Maybe I'll timestamp this, but I'm, I'm going to try and be quite general here. One of the things you'll notice about all of the character arcs in Baldur's Gate 3 is that the main character, the, the PC, begins to uh, explore that person's backstory. As they explore that person's backstory, they realize that that person has a problem. As they play through the game, they will help that character confront that problem and realize that it wasn't really their fault. And that's it. Um, that's the case, that's, if, if you succeed, you know, with the most positive outcome for each of the character arcs, that's every time 
the exact system. Their character is facing a moral quandary. They don't necessarily overcome it. They don't become a new person. They just realize, oh, that's not really me. And that is not a necessarily a symptom of wokeness. I see that in a lot of conservative media as well. It's a trend in modern storytelling where we don't tend to write characters that have very strong moral codes. This is why I think anime has become so popular in the West. Uh, I was watching the um, live-action remake of One Piece, which I think is an incredible example of this. Um, one of the things in that show is that all the characters have very clear goals, and they have very clear moral codes by which they will achieve those goals. And a lot of the conflict and action between the characters is between their stated goal and the moral system that they abide by and by which they intend to achieve that goal. Baldur's Gate 3's characters, on the other hand, want to deal with these life problems in order so that they can go back to scrolling on TikTok. I mean, that's a bit harsh, but you get what I mean. These are life problems that are inconvenient for them, but they're not core to their moral character arc as a whole. Though the other and perhaps more important issue is that the NPC characters in your party feel as if they wouldn't really exist or have any relevance without their role in interacting with the main character. Let's compare a little bit with a game like Mass Effect 2 or Baldur's Gate 2. Take the character of Morden Solis in Mass Effect 2. Morden Solis is the Solarian scientist who invented the genophage. In the Mass Effect universe, the genophage is a um, genocidal um, biological weapon that more or less wiped out the population of the Krogan by making all their females sterile. Morton Solis has to deal with the fact that he is a genocidal scientist. That's something that contrasts his usual funny and outgoing, somewhat quirky character. And it's something that, as the story progresses, he has to confront and deal with. But he would be that person and have to deal with that issue, regardless of whether he ever came into Commander Shepard's party. That's who he is, that's his past, and it dominates his character. Or compare it with characters like Minsk and Edwin in Baldur's Gate 1. Both of them want to save and kill Denny here respectively. But it feels from the player's perspective like they would be out there hunting and trying to kill Denny here either way. And if the player character just ignores both Minsk and Edwin, Denny here just dies in a pit full of gnolls. The world goes on, regardless of what the player character does. In Baldur's Gate 3, all of the arcs of the many character, many characters of the NPCs are centered around the actions one way or another of the player character and where that player character goes or doesn't go. This to me makes the NPC characters feel more like ancillary extras rather than actors in their own right. And I think it's probably one of the reasons that I, I'm really struggling to finish the game at the moment because I'm, 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 I'm very bored. Um, I moved on to other things. I may go back to it, but I think that's that wraps this up. Yeah, so two major reasons. Um, play, characters don't have strong morals, and by that I don't mean they're very moral. I mean they seem ill-defined. They strike me more as they strike me more as angsty LA millennials than they do as action heroes or Dungeons and Dragons characters, and that is somewhat just a generational shift. And also, they don't really seem to have clear, defined places in the world outside of being MacGuffined into their relationship with the main character through the use of a lithid mind stuff and worms. And yeah, with that, uh, yeah, I think that's the end of this video. If you want more uh, commentary, gaming, drama, news, like and subscribe, then I'll see you in the next video.